Hello, this is my guide to unit management in Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14. A unit in Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14 is a deployment of soldiers in a certain formation led by an officer. A unit has five stats, Demolish, Defence, Manoeuvre, Assault and Siege. These stats determine how strong and weak a unit is. This guide is going to cover what influences these stats and how you can best utilise this information to deploy the best possible units. In brief, a unit's stats are influenced by the leadership stat of the officer commanding the unit, the morale of the unit, the doctrine policies of an army that have been selected, as well as the number of tiles adjacent to that unit that are assigned to your force, as well as the number of supporting corps and how many tiles that supporting corps has. An example here is Sao Sao with 3,000 troops in the fish, fo fish formation, that unit has 764 assault and 765 defence. We have a very similar unit nearby led by Sao Hong, who only has 80 leadership versus 100 leadership of Sao Sao. As a result, the assault is only 696 and 697 defence, compared to the 764 and 765 of Sao Sao's assault and defence, respectively. If we increase Sao Sao's morale to 130, which is the absolute maximum morale can be with the right policies assigned, we see here the stats, assault and defence in particular, are increased to 900 and 901. You may notice these white beams leading from different named areas heading towards Sao Sao's unit, uh, Yu, Yongqi, Quan Ting and Guan Du. This is the area reinforcement system the game has. If you highlight over the named core of a certain area, you an example, you can see the boundaries of that area and the colour of the tiles within that area will correspond to the force that controls the area, the tiles. Here we have Sao Sao with 900 and 901 assault and defence respectively, we being reinforced by four areas. If we move Sao Sao over to the Guandu area and skip a turn, we will see these stats begin to change and Sao Sao will no longer be reinforced by the same number of cores or the same number of areas. And there we are, so the turnover, if we look at the Guandu area, it is only bordering Yu and Chen Liu. So, if we highlight over Sao Sao's unit, we can see only two weak white beams are present compared to the four previously, and Sao Sao's unit stats have been lowered to 840 and 841. Now, if we move Sao Sao over to Suan Zhao and skip a turn, we see here that Sao Sao's unit stats have been reduced further. However, if we skip a further turn and wait for some of the tiles in the Swans Out area to flip to our territory, our colour, our tiles, as we now control the core and we've appointed Jun Yu to oversee the area. In between the turns, as we see here, more tiles flip to our force. Sao Sao's unit stats increase slightly as we now control a higher percentage of the tiles within the Swan Zhao area. Certain officers also have traits that buff nearby adjacent units. For example, Sao Ren and Sha He Dun have the Steel General and Veteran General traits. If you look here, we have Yu Jin deployed, 696 assault, 697 defense. If we send out Sao Ren and Jia He Dun to support, and skip a turn, we see that Yu Jin stats have been buffed quite substantially thanks to the Steel General and Veteran General traits. Unique to Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14 compared to other games in the series is the Confidant system. Each officer has a number of officers they are confidence for, sometimes that is mutual, sometimes the link is only one way. Regardless, if one officer leads a unit within a two-tile proximity of another unit led by an officer that is either a confidant of theirs or an officer that they are a confidant for, 
a link is formed represented by a yellow line between the two units. Both units get a stat buff and the chain chance to carry out chain tactics together where multiple tactics are applied and there is a damage multiplier effect. There is no limit to the number of confidants a unit can have other than the two tile proximity. By opening the biography page of an officer, you can see what confidants a unit has, an officer has, that would be linked to their unit if they were deployed. Uh, it's also worth noting that family members have a confidant link that isn't to put, uh, displayed here. For example, Sao P would be the son of Sao Sao and would have a confidant link despite it not showing in the list. Now, if we go to the deploy unit screen, quite conveniently, if you select a unit, an officer, and filter by name, you can then click units that are confidants based on the icons. Stars are the highest degree of confidant, with circles with two rings and circles with one ring respectively being at lesser degrees of confidants. Doesn't change the stat buffs, but it does increase or decrease the likelihood of chain tactics. So as we see here, Xia He Yuan, Xiao Ren, Xia He Dun, Xiao Hong, and Xiao Xiao are all confidants of each other. Yeah, Xiao Xiao all the way down here. So if we deploy all of these units together, we can see here how their stats are multiplied significantly compared to what we were looking at earlier on. This is part of what makes Sao Sao stretch such a strong faction is that you have these core of officers available to you from the start of the game. Now, I've prepared another example here where, unlike the previous example, where conveniently some of the best officers were confidants of each other, looking at Sun Tzu, in the year 200 scenario, the Battle of Guandu, we can see how the confidant system can be used to buff what would ever otherwise be very mediocre officers otherwise. So, just to give context, this is on veteran difficulty as well. If we look at Zhang Liao here, he is sitting around with 1300 assault, 1300 defense, which would usually be very intimidating and quite a tough obstacle to overcome without making use of the confidant system. And for example here, Cao Cao with his 1900 assault and 700 defense, if he deploys against you and you're unprepared, he will absolutely melt your units. However, here we have um, a deployment of 3,000 troops in total spread across multiple units, some familiar faces, Sun Quan, Sun Tzu, Zhou Yu, Tai Shi Si. However, we also have some lesser known officers. Uh, we have the Sun Yu officer, the Sun Yi officer, the Sun Jing unit um, the officer there, and Sun Jiao. What you might have noticed while I was hovering over those units very briefly those stats of these officers are comparison of, uh, comparable to or even excess of Zhang Liao, one of the best officers in the game. Uh, so have a look here. We have Sun Yi with uh, nearly an assault of 2000 on a basic cavalry unit. We have Sun Jiao with 1300 defense in crane formation. Uh, Chou Yu with 1300 assault in goose formation. Tai Chi Si, a less respectable 1000 assault, but he's mostly there for the steel general trait to boost the other officers. We have Sun Quan with 1500 defense and 1400 assault, and Sun Tzu with nearly 3000 assault and 1300 defense because of the number of confidant boosts he's getting from these officers. So even though these may not be on paper the best officers when you're looking at deploying units if you make use of the confidant system you can often find multiple weaker officers that have friendship bonds produce a greater result than top tier officers that don't have any confidant or friendship links another example here is the guan family and associates in the anti guan yu coalition scenario i've deployed most of the guan family uh, Chao Kang, Liao Hua, and two ministrant officers, which I'll cover in a moment. All friends with each other, particularly the Guan family. And we can see, uh, making reference to what we just looked at with the Sun family, 
we have Guan Suo. He's not a bad officer, but certainly not top tier by himself. Very mediocre, 73 degree leadership. Shouldn't be anything special, but through the confidant system and the use of Guan Yu's trait, we see nearly 2,000 assault over 1,000 defense. 1,500, 1,500 for Guan Yin Ping. We have Guan Ping at the front with nearly 2,000 assault and defense. We have Zhao Kang with 2,500 assault and 1,000 defense. And Liu Hua with a similar stat there. Uh, talking about the ministrant officers, they are officers with a trait that allows them to act as a friend or a confidant for other units, regardless of friendship links. It does only go one way, so they don't receive the buffs back in return, but they do act like a supportive unit effectively. So if you have a ministrant officer, they are nearly always worth deploying, even if it is just a thousand to three thousand troops, so they can support your other units. And we can see here these multiple yellow lines all benefiting from the support my ministrant units are giving. Now lastly, you might find officers that completely lack confidants, which is unsurprisingly common, even amongst some of the best officers in the game. Uh, looking at Chang Ren is not a top tier example, but up there. Very good general, very good traits, but no confidants, so he's going to be somewhat limited on the higher difficulties. So if we look at the deployment screen here, and put Chang Ren, Yan Yan and Fa Cheng. No friendship links at all. So if we put them in fish formation, goose formation, goose formation, 3,300 yeah, 3, troops each, that'll do, and deploy them. As we see compared to earlier, their stats are quite mediocre, nothing particularly special, anything to write home about. However, there is a small way around this, not quite to the effect of what we saw with Sun Tzu and Guan Yu, but if we resort, there is the mediate function. You know, people, mediate, click that. You select three officers that need to have been with you for a year and need to have max loyalty. So, Yan Yan. Ah. Always remember to reward. So, if we try that again now. Sang Ren. Ah, Cheng, Yan Yan, spend 10,000 gold, make them sworn siblings, and deploy them here. We can see they are noticeably stronger, not quite compared to what we saw earlier, but if you're playing on the harder difficulties, having 150, 200 more assault and defense really does make the difference. So uh, that is my guide for unit management. I hope uh, anyone watching this finds this helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave it in the comment section. If you have your own suggestions, your own use of confidants or if you think there's anything i've neglected or missed out on the guide be delighted to hear it in the comment section i might make some follow-up videos where i show some of the faction starts on the veteran difficulty and give advice on how to get started if there's anything you'd like to see by all means leave a comment